I get to say it for a third video in a row, but this time we have a breaking news blockbuster trade somehow with Vegas Golden Knights. What's on guys? Jay Hoyt back with you. Today, welcome back to yet another crazy NHL video. Obviously, if you've missed what's going on today, as of an hour and a half ago, I believe, was the trade deadline for the NHL. Now, we've talked about a couple of the moves that the Vegas Golden Knights have made. Getting Anthony Mantha for a couple draft picks, which was huge. They end up getting Noah Hannafin for a couple of draft picks and a defenseman. And it was like, okay, that's a pretty good pickup. Then, like, most of the way through, I think it was yesterday, uh, Jake Getzel ends up getting traded. I don't think Buznavich went anywhere, but um, some other guys got traded. And I'm like, all right, probably Vegas is done. Maybe another, like, depth piece. Uh, no, that's not what happened. So I go looking around the internet just to kind of see what the heck is going on. And I head over to Elite Prospects. And I see a post from them that says the Vegas Golden Knights have acquired Tomas Hurdle from the San Jose Sharks. And that's this post. Now I'm like, there's no way. Like, this has got to be a joke, right? Because, like, he just signed a huge extension. And Vegas doesn't really have a lot of cap space. How in the world would they make this work? So then me reading it, so this is from 317 today, and of course before I saw this post, I saw nothing, right? There was no other post, Vegas didn't announce anything, San Jose didn't announce anything, overall there was nothing out, right? So I had to scroll back and there actually was some rumors that this was happening, and I'm like, how? How does this make sense? So of course, now I'll get to a court in a minute, but they, uh, they acquired him, I'm like, Huh? Now this is going to be the full trade and this is where, again, I don't understand how they made this one work. So uh, to the Vegas Golden Knights is Tomas Hurdle with 17.1% of his contract retained along with a 2025 third round draft pick and a 2027 third round draft pick going to the Sharks, or I'm sorry, coming back from the Sharks. Going to the Sharks is forward prospect David Enstrom and a 2025 first round draft pick. Now, why I said, you know, a few times now that like, how in the world did they make this work? Because if he's still under, I think he's in a second year of this eight year contract, they're adding $6.75 million to their salary cap. How in the world are they pulling that off? But they officially announced it at 431, which as of right now is 10 minutes ago. So I'm recording it right after I saw it. So of course the emotions are still pretty high here. And I mean, it's a great trade. Don't get me wrong. Like you're giving up a prospect and a uh, first round pick. Actually, I did read that wrong. So Vegas is getting hurdle and two third round picks in exchange for Enstrom and a first. How in the world they were able to get Hurdle and two third round picks, I will never know. But if we head over here to Hurdle's page on Elite Prospects, I did, by the way, I hope you guys noticed, I figured out a way to make this screen and the other ones all dark mode so that way we're not getting absolutely flash banged uh, by these stupid, just straight up white websites. Uh, but if we scroll down here and we go down to Hurdle, so this year alone, I uh, yeah, you can still see it. Uh, so Hurdle has 48 games played, has 34 points. Um, obviously not great in the plus minus department because San Jose has been struggling big time. Um, and I think he is also, which we haven't even mentioned yet, pretty sure he's still on the injury reserve list currently. So I don't really know how all that works. But um, if you look at what Hurdle's done in the past last year, 63 points in 79 games. Before that, 64 uh, points. 
Uh, the year before that was the COVID year, but 43 points in 50 games, but really, really solid numbers pretty much his entire career ever since he's been in the NHL. And what the Sharks got back is Vegas's last year first round draft pick, 32nd overall. Uh, now, obviously, being overseas in Sweden and being in some of those European leagues, it's really hard to judge how well some of these players are playing because when you look at 42 games played, 17 points, not really that great, at least, you know, initial look on paper. But you look at some of the other um, stats he's had, you know, with Sweden, I mean, 13 points in the U18 International Junior or whatever tournament or, um, you know, league or whatever that is. Up here in 22-23, 28 points in 28 games. Like, that's solid. I mean, you look at all, I don't know what half of these are, but like he's going point per game or doing really well for himself. So the scouting report of Enstrom, apparently he's a seekingly good in almost every facet of the game. He's made in the mold of a big two-way center, but provides lots of value offensively and at times even in transition. He also is a solid distributor of the puck, both in the offensive and on the breakout. He supports his defenseman down low. Uh, reads passing lanes and cover space while handling the puck with care. So 19 years old, he's 6'3". Uh, I mean, now he's over with the San Jose organization. But after all that, there's kind of two things that bring up some thoughts. And one of them is uh, this tweet here by uh, Tyler. He says, Vegas down the middle is now going to be Eichel, Hurdle, Carlson, and Wah, which is absolutely nuts as a four center like I mean Carlson definitely does not deserve to be on the third line but if you have Eichel and Hurdle like in front of you I mean you can't really not have that um other than that I mean you have Stevenson I mean Amadio's played some center so I don't know where you're gonna fit the other guys around these guys but I mean that's a really really solid center core uh, but then the second one actually here, perfect, um, you know, kind of a, a tweet here uh, from Jack. And he said, if his math is right, the Vegas uh, Golden Knights will have just a shade under $14 million this summer, assuming Leonard remains on LTIR, which I haven't heard anything about him. So I would assume he would end up staying on long-term IR and he probably is done at this point. I mean, maybe he tries to come back, but you know, at this point, who knows? Um, but as we talked about in the last couple of videos, Marcia So needs a contract going into next year. Stevenson needs a contract going into next year. Carrier, Martinez, Hannafin, Mantha, and Amadio all need contracts. And then they have a couple of RFAs as well. So like Marcia So you're, you're going to want to bring back. Stevenson, now that you have Hurdle, that might be he's going to walk or he's going to want to test for agency or, you know, something there. Uh, Carrier, if they can get him cheap enough. I would say bring him back. Martinez is not going to make nearly what he is making now. So if you can get him for the right contract and, and low enough for a contract, then sure, bring him back. If not, not too, uh, not too worried about that. Hannafin would definitely love seeing him uh, come back, but that's going to cost you, you know, a good chunk of money unless you're planning on moving, you know, some other players. Uh, Mantha, obviously it all depends on who he fits in the team. If he does well, if he does consider bringing him back but again he's coming off a five million dollar contract or a little bit above five million dollar contract so what's you know want going this off season if it's anything more than like two or three million you might have to let him walk and i would assume amadio kind of wants a really low contract i mean he's coming off like an eight hundred thousand dollar at like a year or two contract so he might get a slight increase but i don't really think he deserves much more than that just given his role as like a fill-in forward you know really should be on the fourth line but Vegas hasn't really had anyone else better to put up there and he has a little bit more of an offensive upside than uh, Colsar does so you know you have 14 million dollars I mean let's just say Marcia so makes the same as he does this year that's 5 million Stevenson he probably gonna get a little bit of a bump to his contract so let's say 3.5 million there's already eight and a half million and then if you're going to focus on any of these other players, it's going to be Hannafin. Let's just say that's another $5 million. You're already at your number, right? You're already at that $14 million. So that would mean Carrier walks. That would mean Martinez walks. That would mean Mantha walks. That would mean Amadio walks. Now, obviously, if you do some other trades, get rid of some other players, then you have kind of a, a different story. 
acquiring such a huge contract as Hurdle, I don't know if I love it, but I guess we'll see how it all plays out. So we are taking a look at the Vegas cap friendly page and he is on IR, I believe, at least it's on here as uh, he's on IR, but uh, $6.75 million uh, until 2930. So obviously he's going to be around for a bit, but even then once he comes back, I mean, you have so much salary cap, you know, assigned to a lot of these players. So Going into next year, you're going to have to make some moves and you might ha have to sacrifice some players. And one of those people that I'm thinking of is going to be Nick Waugh because $3 million for a fourth line center is a little bit ridiculous. So that would free up a lot of money. Then also the other player that we've talked about in other uh, deals was Noah Hannafin, or not Noah Hannafin, uh, was Nicholas Haig. I looked at the wrong uh, starting N and H. Uh, but two more years at $2.2 million. So if you get rid of both of those guys, I mean, that frees up five point, I'll just say $5.3 million. So you have, would even have some more money, you know, available. And I don't know if I had mentioned, I think I might've briefly messaged, but didn't really kind of emphasize there is retained salary in this deal with hurdle and it's another $1.3875 million for the rest of the six years of this contract, meaning that the San Jose Sharks have all three of the retained salary slots completely full. Being now hurdle for another six years, you have Brett Burns for another year after this year, and you have Eric Carlson for another three years. So all tied up is going to be $5.6 million for the next two years or uh, this year and next year. And then after that, uh, Burns will come off. Then that slot would open back up. And then it would be $2.875 million for an additional two years. And then it would just be hurdle. Now, obviously, the Sharks are just not in a good spot. They're rebuilding. They're you know, slowly getting rid of their older guys, slowly getting, you know, younger players in there, you know, getting rid of Meyer last year, getting rid of Hurdle now this year, you know, shipping Brent Burns off, shipping uh, Eric Carlson off, you know, another player that will probably see his way out of there really soon. Probably, well, it can't really be with a retained salary, but uh, Vlasic, I mean, seven years for, uh, seven, sorry, seven million dollars for another two years again, will uh, will not be good for uh, this team. And all of these older players in San Jose, you know, will kind of be on their way out. Because now that you look at this team, I mean, with very few exceptions, you're all under 30. So you're in a pretty, you know, interesting spot if you are San Jose. And uh, of course, now that you have, like I said, you know, lots of money tied up in your dead cap and not even to say they have two players in the buyout, uh, so you have Martin Jones who has, you know, a few more years under his, uh, under his belt there as well. So a very interesting trade. I don't understand how, you know, they made this one work, you know, as far as a lineup goes, I'm not exactly sure when Hurdle is expected to be back because he is uh, currently injured or coming back soon or something. So we may not see him uh, until the last like week or two of the regular season, but um, he is eligible for the playoffs. And of course we'll have to wait and see how everything turns out lines wise and, and players wise, because there's no way possible that the Vegas Golden Knights have more cap space to do anything with, right? But now we are two hours past the official trade deadline and there's still trades coming through and still announcements coming through. So, I mean, if we have to make a fourth video about a, about a Vegas Golden Knights trade and they acquire some crazy player, then I don't even know what to say anymore. But I'm looking at Twitter right now. I've refreshed it a couple times and there seems to be nothing else for now. So... With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. And if you haven't yet, or if you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next one.